In this section of the lesson, we're going to have a look at diagrams in a lot more detail. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the areas on producer subsidy diagrams. So here we have our market demand, our market supply pre-subsidy, giving us an original price of P1 and market output of Q1. We've applied our subsidy, so we have a parallel supply curve, shifting the supply curve to the right, and a new market equilibrium at P2, Q2. But what we're interested in this diagram is having a look at the total spending on the subsidy. Now we remember that the subsidy per unit is the vertical distance between the two lines, which is equivalent to the distance P2, P3. So that's the subsidy per unit. The new market equilibrium is Q2. So the subsidy per unit times the number of units actually sold, Q2, gives us the green shaded area. And that is the total spending on the subsidy by the government. I would like you to try and see if you can identify the area representing the producer subsidy, i.e. the amount of money that the government gives to the producer, and the area representing the consumer subsidy. So pause the video, have a little think, and rejoin me in due course. Here is the producer sub subsidy, and here is the consumer subsidy. Now you may be forgiven for getting those round the wrong way because it's the opposite to taxation. So consumer subsidy is at the bottom and producer subsidy is at the top. And this becomes quite obvious when we think about it because originally the consumers paid P1 and now they only have to pay P2. So the consumer subsidy is P1, P2 times the new market equilibrium Q2. And P3, P1 is the amount received by the producer times Q2, so the blue area is the producer subsidy. Here we have another diagram, but this time we have some actual data on it. So first thing to note is that the price is in dollars. Second thing to note is that the quantity or output is in thousands. So we have given you a set of questions a, B, C, D, E, F, G. We would like you to pause the video and to see if you can work through these numerical examples and questions and come up with some answers. And when you're ready, restart the video and we will compare answers. OK, here we go. So the total cost of the subsidy to the government is the vertical distance between the two supply curves. So that's between $10 and $15. So the subsidy per unit is $5. And the new equilibrium output is 60,000 units. So $5 times 60,000 units is $300,000. The value of the subsidy to the producer is $15 minus $13, so $2 per unit times 60,000 gives us $120,000, whereas the value of the subsidy to the consumer is 13 minus 10 or $3 per unit times 60,000 which gives us 180,000. The ratio of the producer subsidy to the consumer subsidy is 120,000 to 180,000. So we divide those down to get the lowest common figure we can to find the ratio of two to three. So the producer gets two parts to every three parts that the consumer receives of that subsidy. 
the total spending by consumers before the subsidy was actually $13, that was the equilibrium market price, $13 times 50,000 units, that was the original output, which gives us $650,000. After the subsidy, the price has been reduced to the consumers to only $10. And although they buy more at 60,000 units, because the price is lower, the total spending has been reduced to only 600,000 units. Now, this last question, is the demand price elastic or inelastic, requires you to draw on your information about knowing what happens when prices fall, what happens to total revenue. In this case, total revenue fell. And from that, we can conclude that this product is actually price inelastic.